Hey guys, uh, welcome to your bi-weekly love reading. This is for Virgo. So if you are sun, moon, or rising Virgo, these messages are for you for the weeks of September, I'm sorry, September, for the weeks of March the 16th through the 31st, 2020. So I want to thank you guys for liking, sharing, and subscribing to my channel. I ask that you all please continue to do so. Remember, these are general, so they may or may not resonate, but hopefully they give you some clarity. Um, if you guys are wanting to book a personal reading, you can email me. Payments and orders are collected on Fridays. If you want to reach me by phone, that's a different process. So make sure that you're subscribed so that you can get the notifications of when I'm taking calls. All right, central issue, heart of the matter is the Two of Swords. We also have the Moon. We have the Seven of Cups. We have Temperance, Five of Cups, Eight of Swords, the Devil, and the Hierophant. Interesting. Okay. Um, so... You guys look as if you are being guarded or protective. Um, it even looks like you are in denial about a situation. Um, it could be that you don't want to believe something for what it is. I feel that you're also still healing from some sort of suppressed traumas. Um, I feel that something's been bubbling up. Something's something's haunting you, like it's an unhealed wound, or something has triggered your anxieties. I feel like there is some sort of planetary transits, or there is some sort of phase or cycle that you're going through, or have been going through. That's been bringing up old memories. It even could be like some sort of dreams that you've been having. There's a lot of confusion around you emotionally. Some of you, and although it's not a big deal, but for you, it may be something is going on with someone's sexuality. There's confusion. I feel like someone is pretending to be this perfectionist or this ideal person, this respectable person, but behind closed doors, you know, they, they have another life. Now, sexual confusion or fantasies doesn't just have to go directly towards someone being gay or bisexual. It could be something else like living out fantasies, like there are certain fantasies or fetishes that someone has that they don't want people to know. Um, whether you're single or in a partnership, it, it seems like it's something that bothers you. Maybe you don't understand why you have certain fantasies or fetishes. Um, it also could be the confusion, whereas I don't know if you guys have ever heard of a romantic people where they can have relationships without like but there's no like sexual desire there um so it's kind of platonic but it's you know i'm not asex uh not asexual a romantic so it's hard for me to explain but i did meet or talk to someone rather who was and i was like i've never heard of that before um, so I feel like maybe someone's dealing with some sort of suppressed emotional issues or sexual ish issues or a little of both. Maybe someone is like, I don't know what I like. I don't know what I am. I don't know what's going on. I'm just in a dark or maybe you do have a feeling, but it looks like you're like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, that doesn't exist. I don't want to think about it. I wish... It would just leave me alone. Now, what I'm also getting is a situation where two people are together, but are very opposite, but yet have something very much in common that brings them together. There's 
someone around you that may be um, a reflection of these traumas or like some they're they're echoing something that's going within you. So before you point the finger at someone, they were this, they were that. Why would I attract this type of person? It could be because they're projecting their projection of your fears. Um, or something that was buried down deep. Like, for instance, I think I had a viewer that was in some sort of toxic relationship. And she was just like, how is that a projection of, of me? Like, I'm not a violent person. I'm not this, that, and the other. I've never done these type of things to this person, to, to anyone. So why would I end up with somebody like that? How can that be a reflection of something within me? And I, my understanding from what she explained briefly although I didn't know her entire situation is that well maybe that is your biggest fear knowing that you're ending up with someone that is completely opposite and undeserving you know that to me that can still play off that way so maybe for whatever reason maybe in a, a, a previous life um you know you dealt with that type of person or growing up you witnessed uh, some sort of terrible relationship and you were like as confident as you tried to be like that's never going to happen to me it's almost like yes your biggest fear came true so I just kind of feel that there is a need to confront fears and it does look like you're healing for some of you this is about having a hard time moving past somebody that hurt you and it's like you're still going through some sort of transformation you're trying to pull yourself up out of some sort of darkness that you may have been wallowing in um i feel like this is that shoulda woulda could have energy you know looking back at the past and um just saying oh i should have did this i should have did that instead of just saying it was a lesson. I learned from it. I overcame it. You know, just, excuse me, whatever it is. Now, if you're still stuck in that situation, there's a need for you to stop playing the victim because this also looks like someone's playing a victim. And you might be like, I'm not playing a victim. No, you need to look in the mirror. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. This is like some strong energy I'm getting. And I usually try to keep something, say something nice. And I still feel like I'm saying something nice, but I'm getting like a strong, you're playing a victim type energy. And you, the, the, there's the need to break it. Now, I'm not going to go all into details because I'm sure there are several examples for someone who has like a victim mentality. Google it and see if anything is starting to ring a bell. And it definitely looks like something's being triggered. Um... But yeah, this is someone who is just kind of like, help me. I'm so sad. You know, I'm so, uh, you know, helpless. People are mean to me. You know, and I just kind of feel that someone needs to get out of that. Yeah, you guys, I don't like seeing like even these two together. I feel like you're, you're sandwiched in... Be t with depression, even if you're not dealing with anybody, there's something going on within you that I feel like you're tormenting yourself. Like maybe you feel like you need to suffer or you need to be punished. Um, now, if that's something like mind games or something sexual and playful, then okay. But if you have a different mindset about it where you feel like you don't want to be a victim you don't want to be held hostage or bondaged then there's a need for you to confront these issues and not be afraid to walk away from a person because this also looks like you are dealing with manipulative energies and someone who likes to keep you in a dark someone who does not want you to understand your worth or your value um someone who just who wants to keep you in the dark it's like, I don't want you to learn. I don't want you to grow. I don't want you to move past me. So someone might be saying a lot of things to keep you confused or to string you along. Like, um, you know, I hate, there's so many situations where people are like, 
I'm confused because one minute they loved me, the next minute they say they don't never want to see me again. Well, get rid of that person. That That's too much emotional turmoil on you. It is confusing. I get it. But you can't let people keep doing something like that to you. That's it's not right. You know, and if you continue to stay in a situation like that, all that I can say then is that subconsciously your soul is not finished learning a lesson like you that maybe you do need to suffer a little more to to bring yourself up out of a situation um yeah you know as a personal example like there is this one time where well my whole twin flame like i couldn't let him go like I kept feeling obligated not to let him go or obligated to believe that we were meant to be light workers together. Um, even though at the time we, the, we had gone out the romantic bubble phase that had ended and he was just ready to move on and I wasn't. And I just kept thinking anytime he's like trying to push me away, I'm just like, oh, you know, he doesn't need and he doesn't know any better. And, you know, I'm trying to keep us relevant by occasionally checking in. Um, I'm just giving you your space. Uh, how you doing? You know, sending like little text messages. And even if a reader was to tell me like, girl, let him go. I would not listen. And that's because I had not learned the lesson. It's like, well, they're wrong. I'm going to continue to, you know, fight for him or hold on to him. And finally, something did snap. One time he said something that made me feel just stupider than stupid. I mean, it wasn't insulting. It was just like the way he said it. And the it was something more on the lines like needing to let go or move on. But I could just hear his irritation. Um, or feel it. And I think it was the text message. Yeah, I could just feel the irritation. And something about that last text message just snapped me. I just snapped out of it. And I got over it. It hurt, but it's just like I completely like let it go. Um, and it was like, you know what? I guess I needed to hold on so that I would learn never to do that again. Don't ever do that again. And I learned my lesson. You know, it's just like, so sometimes, yes, you, you can hold on if you want to, but you might find out that one day that you don't ever want to feel like that again. You know, so, and I feel like maybe you're having to go through some certain things so that you can learn a lesson. Matter of fact, you know, this to me is learning some sort of lesson. Um, and it's something that you're needing to understand. This is some sort of learning situation for you. Now, also going back to um, someone living a double life is what it looks like. Someone is coming off holier than thou and then on the flip side, they're uh, a demon or a devil or, you know, just completely different, I should say. Someone who is very uh, obedient, who pays attention to laws and rules and follows all the laws and the rules and is upright and conservative. And this is completely opposite. This is someone who breaks the laws, someone who likes getting in trouble, someone who is disrespectful. You know, it's just completely opposite. So it also could be that this is a couple, you know, and that's why I'm saying, like, just say, for instance, you're supposed to be uh, a judge, like the highest form. You're, you, you're a judge on a Supreme Court and you're married to a drug dealer or a prostitute or something. You know, it's just like, well, look who's calling the kettle black type energy like you sit up here and impose laws on people to do this that and the other and look at who you're with like who are you to do that who are you to judge so I kind of feel like something like that could be going on with you guys and I know that first row was pretty informative um seemed like a lot of information was coming out for you guys also could be dealing with Sagittarius, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius, Capricorn, Pisces, or someone with Mars in Scorpio, or Venus in Scorpio, or Taurus. 
Um, so I feel that you guys are going to have a breakthrough or have some sort of clarity or realization about the situation that you've been in. I also see some sort of communication coming from someone. Either you are going to respond to someone or someone's going to respond to you. I feel like someone is still holding on to what they value or something that someone that is special to them or someone is close to them. But it's more like, like something is in someone's keepsake. It's something material that someone still has of yours or that you still have of theirs. Even if it's only a picture or a text message, it's like something, but I feel like it's something more physical. Like I'm still holding on to this. I don't want to let it go. Like for instance, if you were ever um, engaged and, you know, people have different opinions on whether you should keep the ring or not. I guess it depends on the situation. But maybe someone is just like, I don't want to give the ring back. Like, it's still mine. It's still memories in this ring. I don't want to give it back. Um, but I do feel like someone is holding on to something material. Mm. Now, if someone is in a relationship, these additional cards makes it look as if they're not living up to their marriage vows. Someone is either, either they're involved in some sort of weird relationship that would be frowned upon by society, or they're just flat out a liar and a cheater doing things behind their partner's back. Um, it looks like Someone needs to make a decision because it looks like someone intervenes a relationship that's been well established. Um, I'm also feeling like maybe someone met this person at a formal gathering. <sighs> hmm. This is also about someone taking advantage of a service that they offer or someone is taking advantage of you. This could be a situation where it is something like a client, something that is supposed to be a client or business type relationship, but there's, a, there's something else going on. It looks like someone could be involved in a situation where they're dealing with a political figure. Like I said, it's about some something fraudulent. Something fraudulent is going on. Something is only you're only seeing the the like an image. It's not real. What you're seeing is an illusion, like something else is going on behind the scenes. I feel like someone is a fraud. Um, this can even be where, like I said, you have, it's a doctor-patient situation. And not saying that a doctor can't fall for their patient or a nurse can't fall for their patient, but... I guess something is frowned upon, like, especially with someone seems codependent, like, like, you know, you shouldn't be involved with your psychiatrist. Like it's, that seems like one of those situations where it's like, oh no, 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 you can't get involved with your psychiatrist. That person is trying to help you. They're trying to pick your brain, but it's like, ooh, we're getting involved or something that's supposed to be like a teacher and a student. You know, like a college professor getting involved with a um, young student, like something like that could be going on. Um, or someone who pays you for services, because now I'm seeing something in regards to money. Maybe someone feels like they, they own you, like if you keep paying for them. Or someone who's involved with like the maid or the service or the help, like something's going on 
where someone feels like they own you because they pay you. That's weird. Hmm. Now, before I end this, I do see a situation where you have a choice. Some of you have a choice. There's um two potentials, and I feel like the reason why you're you you're involved with these two different type of extremes is so you can compare the two. You can either get involved with someone who is going to show you a reflection of all that is good, or you can get involved with someone who is a reflection of all that is either unhealthy, I want to say unhealthy. There, so a healthy relationship and an unhealthy relationship. Like you get to compare the two. You get to decide. So I know that was a lot of information. Hopefully that helps. Uh, feel free to leave your comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Many blessings to you.